see. Participants. And maybe just a reminder, especially I know we have a, um, a new person joining, but just as a heads up, it's probably you're best off if you have questions. Um, I'm sure Ray will go over this, but I figure I'll mention it too. Sometimes it helps hear it from more than one person um, to ask if you ask questions or if you have any questions along the way, make sure that you uh, unmute. If you put them in the chat, it's a lot harder for him to see it because of the screen sharing and all this, you know, the various things that are going on. So um, I'll let Ray speak to that also, if that's how he's, hopefully that's how he still feels, but that's how we started. Yes, last week. indeed. Okay. So just to, to go over that again, uh, uh, in essence, we're going to try, this is sort of new to this uh, class. Uh, we're going to allow people to uh, unmute both uh, uh, so that they can speak up when they choose. Uh, if there's a lot of background noise, please uh, mute. Uh, and then uh, for video though, uh, hopefully uh, participants, if they have a question uh, and get sort of recognized, or maybe just if they have a question, if they uh, select their video, then I'll also be able to see that and I'll be able to recognize uh, that they have a question. So we'll just uh, try that out, hopefully in the interest of being uh, interactive, more interactive, but hopefully not uh, chaotic. So uh, let's see, I was asked a question and the name I'm not sure about, but last week I will answer that. And that is uh, uh, for the functions that you might be able to do in, in Python, which are many, uh, there was a question of, uh, what about factorials? Factorials is a, uh, a math for, for you not, that are not familiar with it. It's essentially a factorial n is n times n minus one times n minus two all the way down to one. And in fact, I didn't know for sure. I certainly could write a program to do it, but uh, sure enough, uh, Python uh, does have it. And the way I found it just actually earlier today was I just did a Google search uh, Python, uh, factorial, and so on. And, and what I got is uh, essentially in the math, there's a, a module math, which is very useful for doing math uh, computations. Uh, you can, it's not initially available for your program, but your program, if you open uh, an idle shell, you can follow on. Uh, you can just do import, math and you can do math and uh, so, so hopefully that'll be equal to uh, uh, two times uh, one times two times three times four times five times six. Anyway, so there you have, uh, there are many other math uh, uh, functions available. Uh, another thing we sort of uh, went over last time is uh, you can help call a help function in your idle and you can specify uh, modules like math. And of course, because it's afraid of having too long of a description, if it's more than a certain number of lines, probably a couple dozen, uh, It'll, it'll tell you that it's squeezed. And if you just double click, it'll then give you this description. And you can sort of see uh, a, a, a fairly uh, extensive description of uh, all the functions available uh, from the math module. And if you look down there, there is factorial. So, uh, just so factorial is available for you uh, to use. Uh, you need to do an import math and then to use math functions, you do math dot 
fact, whatever in this case, factorial, and then you put the number in there. And in our case, in uh, the uh, idle shell, uh, it'll execute and just display the, the value. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see. I think we can uh, we can just uh, share. It looks like our poll is uh, uh, about clip. So I'll just share uh, the role. And we have, you know, some found it in no time, some too hard, some not bad. And then uh, one or two uh, finished it. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, Let's see. I wonder how you can save this. Hmm. Well, I won't. I won't get spend time looking for it. But uh, we will just exit there. So thank you for uh, participating in the poll. Um, questions on uh, programming? Anybody have any, you know, questions uh, up front uh, that are uh, possibly keeping you from? from being from the uh, uh, progressing. Uh, questions on Python. Okay. Uh, homework questions. Well, we did that. So we'll just say, uh, uh, mind you, uh, in, uh, we have, uh, we're gonna try to keep to our hour and a half uh, uh, limit on lecture and exercise and uh, 30 minute follow up for longer uh, answers in a question answer period. Okay. Oh, let's see, I guess we should put our. Okay, uh, we take a programming ideas. I, we're going to step back. We've done some programming a little bit in uh, Python, but let's just think a little bit about what is program and what is programming like or not like. Uh, and so the, what are the programming tools uh, and the programming, we'll talk a little bit more about what like and not like mean. Uh, programming tools, well, we've also, we talked about how to create a program. You use a create a file and you put the program in there and you can run that file using the idle. There are other uh, tools available, but idle will suffice for us right now. Uh, and then we can learn how to, Prove, improve programming by sort of uh, copying an existing program that is maybe close to our solution and making small changes, which we call iterations. In fact, that's our, our project, our class project, uh, will be an example of uh, the iterative process. Now, uh, if we look at programming concepts, we think, I think of a computer is a very obedient servant. I does what you say, whether you said the right thing or not. So keep that in mind. But the fact that it does it, does it quickly and accurately um, and repetitively are big pluses. And for example, uh, and here's a, we have a car example. Uh, I, what do I mean by, by uh, a program is like a car in that, uh, our programming language is uh, a similar to a car in that most cars are like, I mean, a lot of cars are quite a bit different from each other. But they have, you know, four wheels, a steering wheel, and so on, and speedometer and such. Uh, car does what you tell it. Hopefully, what you want. I.e., if you do the wrong thing in your car, it's going to do the wrong thing, and probably not to your uh, benefit. Uh, and it essentially does. The car does the same response every time, or almost. I. Uh, you press down the pedal, and it goes forward. Well, it goes forward uh, unless you have the gears in reverse, and then it goes backwards. And then also uh, computer uh, and computer languages often troubles, uh, just like uh, the car gets the blame. You know, oh gee, the, the car didn't work the right way. Uh, I, I, I drove off the road or something like that. So keep that in mind. Now, often what happens is you find or you feel that the computer is the problem and sometimes it's the instructions you gave the computer. Uh, the similar activities to computer programming. Uh, I think they fall into two, two real, life, real world um, areas. You have an ab abstract or indirect, I, uh, cooking recipes, travel directions, assembly instructions, i.e. those things you do on Christmas Eve for your kids, 
uh, to get things done. Uh, hard to uh, figure out sometimes. Physical, um, sometimes what you see is what you get, i.e. constructions, roads, and buildings. Now, the question is, how are these things, the cooking recipes and travel instructions and roads, how are they like a computer program? Well, in essence, our computer programming. I'll use computer programs and computer programming so that it's synonymous there. Well, those things, the building the roads, the writing instructions, uh, often you build once. I, you write the, somebody writes the instruction once and then many people use those instructions or recipes again and again. And that's the way the program works. Often you write the program once, at least you hope to write it once. And if essentially you once means until it works to your satisfaction. And then hopefully you're able to use that program again and again. Same thing with these uh, things that are like computer programming, either the abstract like uh, instructions or uh, rows. Uh, you, you write them or build them once and people use them many times. The builder and user are often different. Uh, people build the road and then many people use it again and again. Same thing, you write your program and if it's a popular program, uh, many other people use it time and again. Uh, building errors show up many times. I, if you make an error in a recipe, or instructions, or assembly instructions, or a, a road, or a building, uh, that error is going to show, if you make an error, it is going to show up every time people use that building, or road, or uh, assembly instructions. Then also, and this is often the real surprise to people, mistakes don't always show up immediately. And this especially happens because uh, a lot of parts of your program are possibly never used except for, you know, very few types in general. Well, that happens with, you know, all the other sorts of things we see that are like that. You know, road, if it has a, a, a problem in a certain exit that's mislabeled or such, yeah, and maybe if that's a place that hardly anybody goes to, you know, people don't see it until it happens. And then um, it, sometimes until it happens enough to somebody important and then they fix it. So those are the sorts of things that are very much like uh, in computer programming as we looked at the other things, the, the similar life things we have in, in life. So often you'll see similarities. Now, unlike computer programming, these things, if they're physical, like a road or a building, but they're made of physical materials, you know? They're, they're, you know, bricks and mortar, say, so to speak. Uh, they're hard to copy. You know, you have a building built here and you say, I want another building just like that over there. Uh, that's hard to do. You just, you know, <laughs> have to build another building. Well, and they're hard to manipulate. I, you make a building and you say, oh, gee, this, this, this uh, uh, entrance is not really what I wanted. Well, it's kind of hard to, ch to change that. Well, in, in, in programming, in programming, yeah. okay, uh, so, um, and, but uh, on a plus side, these things that you have uh, that are in the physical world, the instructions or uh, uh, rows of buildings, they're easy to see which is uh, uh, good, uh, you know, makes you easy. Oh, I see the building, I see the road, I see. Uh, in programming, not so easy to see. So uh, those are the things that are, uh, that are different in the real world than they are called the real world, the physical world, than your computer programming. Uh, what is easy about programming, i.e. not so physical is Creating, creating programs and copying programs and moving there is a snap. You see that we, we do copy and save, you know, hardly any problems at all. Uh, once, you, once you have a program, you can uh, use it, check, uh, copy it, um, move it to someplace else, give it to, distribute it to people. By and large, compared to the physical world, uh, snap, snap. The 
programs, uh, programming, uh, they don't wear out. Once you write a program, by and large, uh, it's not, you can run it once, you can run it a million times, and it's gonna do the same thing the, for a million times. Mind you, if, you, if, it's, if it's, there's a problem, it's gonna do the problem a million times too. But mainly it doesn't wear out. Change is relatively easy. Now you talk to some people say, well, programming is hard. Well, compared to moving that door that you say, I wanted the door to face at the uh, west instead of north in a building, uh, writing a program to do this, some, some sort of thing like that and make a change is a lot easier than you'll find in the physical world just by and large because of the fact that uh, those things about creating, copying and moving are generally so easy, it makes changing the programs easier. Maybe I should say easier. Work on new while using old. Now, I don't know how many of you people remember the thing called the big dig, but uh, maybe you remember when the last time they had to uh, change your uh, plumbing uh, system in the roads near your houses. When they're building something, the new dig in, it, in this case in Boston, or making a change in your road, by and large, you are stuck. You can't use your road. In programming, often you can, um, you say, so oh, I want to change a program. Or somebody, your boss says, I'm going to change, uh, I want it to do something. I want something to do. Well, you can say, hmm, okay, you can use the old one until we get around to making the new one. And that is a big, big plus in uh, uh, the programming world because it is, does give you a lot of, of flexibility that you won't find in those things that are similar to programming, but physical in nature. Okay. Uh, what's not so easy in programming? Well, one thing is you can't see it. You know, your, your program, I mean, you can see the, the quote, what's called the source code, the, let, the stuff you wrote down, but often in a program itself, when it's an operation, uh, you really can't see what's happening so well. And that tends to make sometimes understanding uh, the issues of, well, it doesn't do what I wanted, uh, harder. Uh, everything is connected, uh, unexpected consequences. I, I, in an in a engine, you know, this belt works to that gear and so on. And you by and large, okay, it may be complicated, but and a trained person can say, oh yeah, this is connected to that. Oh, that's stuck. That's why this is having a problem. Uh, and a computer program, uh, be, for, some re for the reasons it's actually so flexible, often it is... Uh, hard to um, find, understand these things or unexpected consequences. You make one small change in one part of your program and all of a sudden something what seems like in the other part of your program doesn't work the way you were hoping, sometimes dramatically. Well, that's the thing you, and these, and then uh, sometimes uh, the additional last end, it's not easy to tell how close to done. You know, you're painting a room, and or your contractor is painting a room and three walls are done, you can by and large guess, and then you know how long it took them to do those three walls. You can guess, it's not always perfect, but you can get, get a pretty good idea of what, how close to done. In a computer program, for those reasons that it's the flexibility, it's often hard to tell how close to done you are. And this can be, uh, if you're in the computer business and you have your boss wanting to know and his boss and their boss and sure her boss wanting to know, well, when's it going to be done because they're counting on this, uh, sometimes it becomes a pressure cooker uh, situation. And, and those are issues about the can't see it, uh, everything's connected, not so easy to tell. Those are, you know, I would say, facts of life, but there are ways of dealing with that. But the main thing is uh, you have to get a sense of, um, you know, that they're there and that you have to be uh, aware that those are the sorts of things that could be uh, causing, a, uh, you know, issues. Okay, so let's see. 
those are generic uh, things. Just a little bit about Python. We we've all we've looked at this for the first session, but uh, just a little more review in uh, depth, as we said we were going to do. Uh, what is Python? Well, we said it's a programming language. I.e., it's it's the instructions on how to make the computer uh, or tell the computer to do what you would like it to do. Uh, we it has parts, uh, meaning it has functional. Uh, things that allow you to do things. We talked about comments, I, parts of the program that just say, oh, this is what I meant to do, not do anything, but this is just a, a sort of a side post of signpost of this is what's very much like a signpost. You know, it doesn't do anything. It just tells you what I hope to do, which is very important because uh, as I used to uh, tell people, I used to, uh, uh, mentor and uh, actually direct, uh, uh, often better to be uh, tell people what you want to do, what you wanted to do, often because they can they can see your program and so they, and they can run your program and they can see what it did, but sometimes it's hard to tell what the programmer wanted to do because often that's a big plus because when you find it, say, oh, gee, uh, I didn't do what I want. Yeah. Well, that's because the programmer didn't didn't want to do that, and that, that could be all the difference between being totally lost and understanding what the issue is. He didn't do it by mistake. He just didn't do it what I wanted. Variables. We talked about variables. They contain our values. Uh, before values, uh, we have numbers, integers, float. We have strings, character strings, names, and such. Uh, we have variables which allow us to carry around very much like shelves and, and containers in the physical world. Uh, and we have computation and arithmetic, very much like what you see in algebra, as we said. Uh, and then we have rules and styles. Sometimes uh, the rules uh, are, uh, this is what, uh, you know, variables have to start with uh, a letter, you know? Uh, a style means, uh, well, maybe you should have all the letters in your variable, uh, you know, lowercase. So they're hard to misspell. So you see the style is something that maybe is a restriction or a guideline, uh, but often can be a big help or hindrance, depending on how people follow these things, to give you a working, um, working rule or guidelines. Okay. Ah, okay, here's just a little bit of, we talked about Python still, we, we haven't done that, at least we didn't do it the first session, uh, but we're just gonna go over these first uh, three, uh, or actually two, like, we're gonna talk about if and else, which are decision makers. Uh, we're gonna talk about looping, which is like decision makers, except uh, a way to go um, do a thing repetitively. A while for a break and continue, we'll talk about those. Those are ways to stop the looping, if you will. Okay. So uh, now I sent this out uh, to people uh, and I'll just use it. We won't go totally over it because uh, I don't want to take people's uh, too much time, but we're going to just um, same thing. We did a bit a mo uh, much of the last the session. We're going to, um, oh, let's see, da, 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 where is this? Let's get rid of that one though. And uh, let's open a uh, an idle. Uh, let's see. Here we are. Okay. And hopefully you'll be able to open your own. Uh, uh, let's do it again to get less on the. So hopefully you'll bring up your idle. And then we'll just uh, talk a little bit about uh, things. The, um, uh, the summary I'll just leave up there, hopefully not distracting, mostly for my own uh, reminding. Uh, Boolean values. Remember, we had numeric values, which are like numbers, one, two, three, or 1.2 or such. Uh, very important decision uh, process is a Boolean value, which is either true or false, uh, and you uh, there we are. Uh, 
<laughs> that's nice. Um, I said the Boolean values that are uh, true or false, they allow you to they are facilitate decision making. And uh, in fact, uh, if you look, you can have constants, true or false. And those are the Boolean constant values. But in essence, it's the true and false are the values that uh, a Boolean uh, either expression or uh, variable can take. So uh, given that, uh, to do decision making, uh, which we do a lot of in computer programming, uh, essentially uh, you, we use our primary as a Boolean operator, which is very much like uh, the operators uh, in, uh, in arithmetic. If you say, you know, remember we did the examples, uh, our arithmetic one by two. Well, you can also do uh, Boolean logical, if you will, that a lot of people use, you can do, uh, and that is a, a Boolean expression, which essentially asserts, if you will, a one is less than two. And if in our uh, idle shell, uh, you can see it evaluates to uh, true. And you can sort of see, oh, just go over there. So you have uh, uh, operators, uh, meaning uh, less than and greater than, equal to, notice you double equal, unlike the single equal, which is reserved to assign values. We, we use them when we were uh, setting up variables or doing arithmetic. Uh, we use a single equal to assign, a double equal uh, assigned to, and you should try here. Hopefully everybody has their idle shelves open and you can say two is is greater than as are equal to two or equal to two, and sure enough, it evaluates to two. If you go up here, remember we can go up arrow and we can go enter, and it uh, we can change it. And sure enough, uh, two equal equal three. Uh, well, they're not equal, so it evaluates to false. So uh, there we have the operators, very much like uh, the operators you saw and. When you did the uh, algebra class or such, uh, uh, you'll often see maybe slightly different, but uh, by and large, with the restriction of typing, uh, the best people could come up with, if you will. And uh, so there we have uh, the Boolean expressions. Now, what's the benefit of the Boolean expressions? Notice we, we hopefully have these examples. Uh, mind me, I did this here so that people could use it when I sent it home, that people could get a, a chance to look at it. So now what's the benefit of this Boolean uh, the values or Boolean expressions? Well, the biggest benefit is uh, to make decisions. So you can make a, a, a test and you can now, you would like to make a, 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 a decision based on that. You can use the if uh, keyword. And of course, if, I'm, if I keep my, um, that's the problem with having a, a lots of screen is you tend to make uh, okay if conditional and the mainly the thing is uh, it's a sort of format is if and then the condition which can be these tests uh, and then you can have a bunch of uh, statements notice indented. So here we can try something and you should try like if uh, two is greater than three, uh, you have to have at the, as this uh, thing shows you very important, you have this colon at the end, which tells Python, ah, this is the end of the, the test. And now I can do enter and now I can do print. Say, I have to do, and sure enough, two is not greater than three, but I can go up arrow, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow, hit enter, and then I can say, okay, let's let's make a change and say two is greater than one, and I can go down and I can change my comments so it reads. And now if I do enter here, by the way, it's gonna be, 
Oh, thank you. So I got to be careful. Uh, sometimes you have to be sure to get to the end. So let's see. Enter. And sure enough. OK, so here did the if a, a test, which can be any of those sorts of tests that we saw, and then a indented um, print statement. OK. Um, and let's see we have a whole you can certainly uh do things like we can certainly do such things as if notice we we, we test it against a, a constant but sure enough if that Expression here evaluates to true, it will do the indented statement. Uh, let's see. This is very long. Let's make this a little shorter. Any questions so far? So we talked, we went blazingly through. Uh, you got uh, Boolean expressions that evaluate, look a lot like arithmetic expressions, but they evaluate either true or false, depending on whether they're true or false. And we can use them using the if keyword with the expression we want, followed by a colon and then an indented. In this case here, if we We can go up here and uh, say, OK, I want to uh, add it. So notice it, uh, it, do, it uh, did both of the indented statements if you do um if you come back and uh, if this wasn't indented then it would just fall down and 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 do this statement here again so anyway for example let's say we go up here and we say Ah, see, this is the problem. If I if I if I um, do my enter too soon, oh, backspace, backspace. I go down here, and I say, okay, it's not going to do. If I if I do this and I do enter, notice it didn't print out anything because, of course, two is not greater than two. But let's say I did something like this. And I said, oh, gee whiz, I want to add, I want to add more something else to this uh, indented clause. So, but, oh. Oh. ah, wait a minute, I figured out how. Oh. Remember, that's one of the things that idle is, is a little strange because it um, is because of this prompt, it, it makes you think that uh, the if is starting indented, whereas really whoop. so what did I do wrong here? Uh, well, Barrow. Oh, so. Ah, to be honest, this, this is where idle gets you into trouble because uh, you're not 
short of uh, you're not sure exactly where it says uh, indented unindented does not match uh, where it should. So what I would do here, and uh, let's see, uh, it's an exercise. Uh, let's let's get a new file. Now we're not going to just go new file and give an empty line. We're going to go look at recent files, and we're going to say my work because that's where we get to the files to start out and they're in the right spot. And so let's say, okay, let's do save as, and you should be doing this. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just say, uh, uh, My, so we're going to just make an example. My if three line, and we're going to just take here and say if And so let's say we forgot to do this. Huh? Oh, well, that's... Okay, so let's say we read, we have my three line and we should probably say our new date is uh, what twenty one, and uh, so we run this. We save it, and sure enough, it says the third line, because of course uh, this. If we thought, oh, we were going to just these things after the greater than we're going to be all done, it only does the indented ones. So we have to go back, say, and what? Ah, nothing happened here because uh, obviously the, the the two is not greater than two. But of course, if we did something like uh, equal equal two, uh, now if we wanted to save this as a different example, we we would say we right here we'd have to save it as a new file. But let's just run it. And. Uh, Sure enough, see, it, all of them run. So keep in mind things uh, for this if to work, and this is true for a lot of the other things, uh, the, the body of the uh, construct, they all have to be indented to the same, same extent. In our case, in idle, uh, it's gonna indent it uh, by default to four, four, tab, four spaces. If you will. And often it's a good thing to use tabs instead of spaces for, uh, reasons that uh, counting uh, tabs, it doesn't count tabs as four spaces, it just counts tab as a one thing. All right, so uh, we have a, a, a uh, another tool, a tool called if, it can take the uh, Boolean value that is generated by a Boolean expression. Uh, it has the if and then the test, and uh, colon, and then indented. And if uh, something is not indented, uh, 
it's just going to fall through and it's going to do this every the third line every time no matter what okay all right uh let's see here we are so that's the uh if clause which is very 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 powerful there is um, another uh, clause, uh, a while, which is for conditional looping, which is uh, the sort of thing you do in computer programming a lot. So for example, if we do, well, let's see, we have to start with something like we said n to one, we have a condition, so we say n is less than five. We have the colon at the end. We do print. And then important, and there it is. So now that's a, uh, um, Thing you do in, in, in the idle shell, you can certainly uh, take this and uh, do something in, uh, in a file, which we would just take and, uh, for example, since it's so close, rather than go to my work, I can uh, go and say, okay, and you should too, save as, my whoop, while whoop. oh my i already have one um uh, but so uh, i will just save over it if you have a case like this it probably says oh do you uh, do you really want to overwrite what you already have but in my case uh i will just say yes i do and then here, remember, once you, you've made it file, you still have to do your uh, updating of this uh, example. Uh, and here you could say, well, we can just sort of get rid of all that and just say uh, n equals, say, 1. Print now. Let's say, for example, uh, and if I run this, yeah, it, it printed one two nine because it's while it's less than. And but let's say I accidentally forgot. <coughs> or commented it out, this n equals n plus one. What's going to happen? Anybody? Anybody? You can unmute. Well, let's see. Whoops. Now you hit Control C on my computer. I know exactly what we do in the Mac, but Control C it, it creates an interrupt and it stops because notice if I don't increment, I add to this uh, end, it's going to stay the same. It's going to keep going around and it's always going to be less than ten. So you make a change. You say run. It asks you. So you say yeah, and sure enough. Okay, so there's a while, it allows you to do uh, loops, which are very uh, important and very useful. You have, very, like the if, you have, a, a, instead of the if, you have while, have n, or some, some test, in this case, n minus 10, you have a colon, and then you have the body of the loop indented, in this case, four spaces to fall idle. 
and it creates a, a loop until this becomes not true. And of course, if you wanted something to go forever, you could say while true, if you wanted to. And that's often useful when you have a loop that you expect things to do uh, forever. OK. Uh, uh, let's see. Let me show you an example. OK. Um, ah, one other, and another tool in, in uh, your bailiwick in Python is a, the thing called a list. Often in, in some languages, they're called arrays. But in, in Python, it's called a list. And what it is, it's just a group of values that you can deal with in a uh, constructive way. In fact, we can try doing list one equals, and the way you create a list constant, if you will, is you use square bracket and, oops. And there is the way uh, Python uh, prints it out, just to show you it's a list of items, in this case, integers one, two, three, four. All right, now, um, the, the, the reason the list is, one of the reasons list is so uh, useful is that you can progress or iterate through that list very easily. And we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but often uh, you'd like to make a list of, you know, numbers, sequence, sequential numbers, and you don't want to write one comma two comma three and so on. So Python has a uh, built-in function called range. And you can say, range, and you can say, I want the numbers from one, and notice it shows you a little pop-up, one, two, five. Now, if I say that, it remembers that it's a range, so it keeps that, but it can use, it can use that as a, a, a list. Whenever you see range, it can use that. And we'll get, uh, we'll show you that in a, in a second. So we have the capable of, uh, and in fact, it's a function called list. And if you do, it converts uh, the range directly to a, a list. So anyway, range will be a useful thing for allow us to, to go through number sequences because it'll create a list. And from that list, we'll show you how to uh, progress through a list. And the uh, key word for uh, going through that loop is four, if we can find it. Ah, here we are. So four, like while, it loops through a list of variables, but in this case, a, a exact list. While does things until a certain uh, command, uh, expression, if you will, or, or value is not true. A four does it directly loops through a list of values. And the format for that is four, and then the iteration variable, which is a variable you use uh, later on as the value that goes through the list. And then, of course, uh, there's a in, and then the list itself, and then a colon, and then the indented statements. So, for example, here, if we do four uh, n in list one colon print
and there we are. We 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 went and noticed that we loop the four loops through this expression, or loops through this uh, statement, if you will. Takes each time the value in list, puts it in N, and allows you to use that uh, as we did here in the print. Now, notice we can we can now use for uh, for n in range one say six. So it notice that it, so you can use this range. So instead of having to laboriously put, you know, if you want to range one to hundred, you don't have to do one comma two comma two and put it in the list or put a square bracket here. You can just use the function range, and it creates a a list or it recreates what are called iterable, which is essentially um, the innards to act like a list. Notice it goes one through five. Well, range uh, goes, creates a, a list one less than, less than that, that uh, value. So sometimes uh, I find myself wanting to make sure that things look the way I want. I can do something like, five plus one here, which just allows me to uh, show people that, oh, what I mean is the range, and I know it's one less than that, so I'm going to put the, a one there. Oh, and now, of course, one of those things about idle that's not so fun is that you have to so uh, this looks a little strange, but it gives you a, a good way of, of showing uh, the reader, and that may be yourself, uh, what you're really thinking about. Oh, I'm going from one to, to five, and, and I know range creates a thing going up to less than the stop. Okay, um, any questions? I know this has been a lot, uh, you should uh, try as I, uh, if you haven't, I, I'll say uh, if things are anything unclear, uh, you should try these uh, examples that I sent you uh, and, and try to make little programs out of them uh, when you can to give yourself uh, uh, some practice. Okay, let's see. All right. Okay, we'll chop that. Uh, those are some of the things we're going to go to, but let's. Ah, okay. Um, here's a hopefully not uh, totally off uh, the beaten path, but I, I know a lot of people uh, are not arithmetically uh, excited, but are somewhat. Uh, uh, often in, uh, interested in uh, graphics or pictorial uh, things. So I wanted to show uh, an example. And in fact, you have the example in your, uh, so hopefully we'd like you to, uh, let's see, take this out. And uh, let's get this program here inside uh, turtle under exercise. So hopefully if you go up file and you say uh, open and uh, you go to introduction to programming or wherever you have your, your whole thing, uh, you should have presentation down there, but instead of going to present, you should have the exercises. So go to exercises. And, and the exercises are lots of interesting uh, things like uh, some, some exercises we won't get around to, but you can look around there if you'd like. Uh, turtle, and these are things with the turtle module. Remember, the turtle module is a thing provided in Python to allow 
uh, uh, sort of graphic, uh, two dimensional graphics um, games, if you will, toy. So if we just take a look and we look for my picture. So here is the program, my picture. Hopefully you all have that in front of you now. So if you brought this up, we could say, uh, well, what's this gonna do? First of all, just to look at it, notice we follow the rules. We have the name of the program. We have our uh, date, we have the author. We put a, remember these triple quotes allow you to do strings, but multiple lines of strings. Sometimes I'll, I'll say, keep them all on the, the terminations on a line by themselves, but sometimes I'll get lazy and say, okay, the first line I'll, I'll start here. So anyway, this is a little fun with turtle graphics to growing a square spiral. Now, uh, remember, we, we talked it earlier in the class of uh, to bring in a module that you may not have already uh, into your program so you can use it. You say from one, one version, we said import turtle, but another approach is I want to be, uh, I want to have all the module, all the, uh, functions that are part of the turtle module, I can say from space turtle space import. Now I could put some names here, but I want all of them all. So I'll just put input star, which says, as we put a comment here, bring in all the turtle functions. All right, now uh, we have a, uh, variable colors, which is going to be a list. And notice we use a square bracket, close square bracket. And one of the nice things about Python, although most things are on a single line, uh, things inside expressions, inside parens, or inside of square brackets, they can uh, migrate from this, they have a dispensation from this rule about being on one line. And so they can be multiple lines, which is very helpful because sometimes lists that you build are uh, just find themselves being long. And so you'd like to keep them uh, showing up on the page. So here we have, we just have a set of strings, if you will, or a list of strings. And we have our uh, essentially uh, the rainbow colors, if you will. And so we put in a variable called colors. So that's a list now, colors is a list. And then we use our four, as we showed you before, and we're gonna put I, which is just gonna be a variable that we store each time we go around the list, we store a number and we get it from what? We get it from a range, which is that built-in function to give you a list of numbers. And the list of numbers is gonna be the lend is a built-in function that says, take this a list, which is in this case colors, and give me the number of entries, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's gonna be lend of colors is gonna be seven. And the range, now notice we only have a, one value here, which means that they're gonna be a default start because the, the default is if you only have one number, that's the, the stop point. And in this case, the beginning of our list, our, our, our list of numbers is gonna be zero and it's gonna go zero, one, two, so on up to len colors, which will be seven. So this is gonna be a loop starting I with zero going up to uh, essentially set, set one less than seven because remember the range puts out a list that stops at one less than this. So it's gonna go from zero to six. And what's it gonna do? It's gonna set a color and now color, where did this function come? This function came in turtle, which sets the color and the color it's gonna set comes from our list. And the one it's gonna pick in this square bracket, we haven't seen this before, is to pick starting at zero, the ith case. So it's going to, first it's going to be zero and then one. And then notice the list, the index starts at zero. That's just sort of, 
a shock to some people, but it's just the way historically they decided to do that. So it's going to go and start colors through the rainbow. Now it's going to make a variable side, which is going to essentially be this value 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 7. And it's going to make a, a value either 0 length or 50 or 100 or so on. And it's going to make a, a side increase. And then it's, we're going to execute this function called forward, which is going to make things go in a forward direction. And we'll show, I'll show you this in a second. And then the next thing it's going to do is it's going to do a right 90 degree turn. So let's just try this, and you should try this on yours. We're going to run the module. As Turtle creates this map, and there it is, our, our uh, square. It started out with a, uh, a single thing in red. That's not a very great red, but I guess it is. 50, and then it made a right turn. And then made a thing twice as long or 100 and make it yellow. And then it goes to green and so on. So uh, you could try it and run it. Hopefully, that's what you get. Anybody not get it? So here is uh, OK. Now, is anybody not getting it? I'm going to ask you to do something now uh, and make, this, make a change to this program. So if you, if you didn't get it, now the time to uh, unmute yourself and, uh, and tell me. OK. Now, we just to show you an example. Now, here's the case. You have your program, this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a little a longer spiral. And what we're going to do is we're going to do is save as. And this is where you get the benefits of the, being able to do program. We're going to say, my picture underscore three. We're going to make it three times as long. We're going to do save. And now it tells me I already have it. But I'm going to say, I am going to replace it. And now, so OK, now we go in here and we make a change. And uh, sometimes what people do. I find myself doing is and I take the, the, the thing before underneath and I just put it up there so it, it reads me a history of, of the changes. So we, we could say up here that Picture. And this is very helpful sometimes because sometimes when you're looking for something to plagiarize, I mean copy and develop, uh, you'll say, oh, gee, this looks good, but not maybe, maybe there's something else. And say, oh, it came from that. I'll take a look at that. Maybe I'll, I'll copy that. So here we are. We have a, a little thing in here. Okay, we, we said something here. Uh, We're going to make it uh, times three. So what we do is we go in here and next line after colors, we make another list variable called C3 equals colors times three. Now, remember, in arithmetic, you times three, you know, the, uh, the, the style of, of getting arithmetic. And with a list variable, what it does, if you do a times, is it takes the list and it just makes it three times as long or five times as long or a hundred times as long. So it's very good to, if you want to create longer lists from shorter lists, to know this uh, shortcut of doing a multiply. So C3 is going to be a letter. So it's going to be red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And then the next is going to be red, orange, yellow, and so on. So there's going to be uh, a list that's three times as long uh, with these uh, strings done three times. So then what we do is we say, okay, we want to make this, we want to use this list, C3, and we have to, wherever we had colors before, 
we have to uh, do the appropriate, uh, in only two places here, but we have to, the range has to be, it's going to be three times uh, seven, so that's going to be 21. So range, if we length is going to be 21, and the range will go from zero to 26. And the color is just going to pick these colors in, in uh, uh, order, and the size pretty much going to be the same. And it's just going to see. So if we try this, we run and we say, uh, let's see, do we save in the right spot? Yes, a new. I know I, I, it looks, I, I think it's simple, but I think it's cute. And so uh, this is something that you might find yourself uh, wanting to play around with. Uh, if you look at the, uh, these functions here, uh, you can certainly, oh, where is it? Help turtle. Uh, oh. Uh, there's 9,000 lines of help. I don't, uh, maybe you probably don't want to look at it right there. But if you go and if you turtle is a, uh, it sounds like a fun thing to do. Uh, if you go help and you go uh, Python docs, if you look up here for modules, and you go down to T for turtle, you can sort of see uh, a whole slew. Of, and, and the main thing is you can see uh, this at very close at the top, you can see things like forward and you can sort of see the forward uh, moves turtle forward a specified distance and so on. Uh, in the distance you're going. So, and you see right. Uh, now notice uh, in this case, uh, you have to stick the turtle uh, in here because they assume you did a import turtle, whereas we did uh, uh, in our program to make things easier for ourselves, we, we took the shortcut of saying, okay, uh, we want everything to do with uh, turtle. So we're gonna just say, use the from turtle import star. Okay, so there we are. We have uh, uh, hopefully uh, an example of uh, something you might find uh, useful or fun or both. Okay, I can see we're we're not. Uh, Our, in our ambition, we'd like to cover everything in the world so you can have lots of fun, but we see we're going to probably take longer in our courses than we were hoping, but that's okay because uh, I think uh, you will gain a lot. Okay. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, we got, okay, 15 minutes because we are going to be steadfast of uh, stopping the lecture at the date and uh, uh, allowing you to ask whatever questions you like. So uh, we've so far talked about a lot of things. Uh, and most importantly, uh, uh, variables, uh, expressions of uh, Boolean or arithmetic uh, testing with if, uh, looping with uh, while or for, uh, with the special case of, uh, and lists that allow you to, which for allows you to traverse those lists. The next biggest tool I think I can give you 
and show you is functions. And in fact, there may be many, and I guess I'd probably fall in there, is that functions are, after just the first few things that we've covered, may be the single most important uh, computer programming tool uh, in a language, because it allows you to do things like grow. The problem with the big programs is it's hard to, like building a bridge, it is almost impossible for humans to comprehend what it takes to do something, to build a, you know, uh, to the um, a bridge, you know, in, in, in Boston. How can a human build it? Well, it's because a human doesn't build that. A human builds some tools that help them build tools that help them build tools that help them do that. Well, functions are the tool in programming that allow you to do those things of starting out with something you can handle and get your head around and build bigger things. And also allows you to use other people's functions that they built. So functions, how are they used? Well, I'll just give you a, a small a look and then we'll go into detail. They are a, called by name. Yeah, example, print is a function written by somebody. Uh, and when you wanted to use it, you call it by name, print. Uh, the data you pass is in a comma separated list of values, just like print, you know, A comma B comma C. A, B and C are values, hold values that get passed to the print statement. And the result you can imagine is it, it gets replaced by call. For example, max is a function that computes the maximum of whatever number of variables there are. It can be treated as top gets the maximum, whatever that is. All right, so that's, that's how functions are used. How we define functions, if we're gonna write them, or if somebody else wrote them for us, they did this definition. They do a formal plan description of the name, and it's the names are in the same style or restrictions of variable names. By and large, they start with a letter, uh, and they uh, have any number of letters and numbers after that. Parameters, okay, that's the day they specify that when they're de defining a function, they specify in the, how the data is passed to that function. What are the data, pieces of data that this function is going to use? And then the body is just what the function is going to do. And the body is going to be indented very much like uh, we see with these other con constructs we use. The parameters in a call is just a list of values to use. Uh, in the body, it's a list of named values that the body can use that, uh, those values. And in the best both cases, it's a parenthesized comma or comma separated list. So here's an example. Our definition is DEF, which is a, a fixed keyword a space, and the name of the function, in this case, add to, and value one, value two, those are the names of the internal variables that are gonna be used inside the add to function. And then, and then the colon at the end, very much like if, while, or for statements have that colon that indicate that this is the, so the beginning clause, and then underneath indented, you have the body of the function. In this case, it's just two uh, statements. Sum equals value one plus value two, and then the keyword return. And then we could have said return value one plus value two, but sometimes it's nice to put the results here in a, in a variable that you're going to then return so that you can think about it and maybe do testing inside. In our case, our use, sum one equals add two, one plus two, 
and sum two equals add two, three plus four, three comma four. See, notice these values here are passed to add two. Inside add two, he only knows that there's value one and value two. Okay. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold off this exercise and say uh, you might try it in your uh, as, as, as a part of a homework. Um, notice it's, it's just a, it's essentially doing this in a file and running it, all right? And then using these values, these pairs of values, and, and test or exercising it, all right? So you should try that. Uh, when you get a chance. Think of it as an auxiliary homework assignment. Um, another uh, little thing which we'll hold off and, and uh, push toward uh, homework, uh, product function. Very much create a file called product y or product.py and just uh, write a function that takes factors and returns the product of these factors and then test it on a set of things. You can add more uh, test cases. Uh, often it's good to use test cases that you think are uh, valid, but not valid, are valid, but close to being invalid, invalid, and so on. Just as more testing. Okay, now, um, a further thing in functions, which, uh, are very make useful. So far, we talked about positional function, a positional parameters. I parameters that come in parameter one, comma two, parameter two, and so on. Well, sometimes you'll have a lot of uh, parameters uh, possible in a function, and you most of them stay the same. Most of them are not necessary. So another thing Python provides as a language is what's called keyword parameters. Uh, they allow for such things as optional, i.e. seldom used parameters. They allow the parameters to be in any order, which allow when they get called, which allows you to uh, order them, the order it, it avoids mistakes. And sometimes you'll have parameters that, that mean more until you want them showing up in the call first rather than later. So keyword parameters allow you to do that. And uh, mind you also, so, uh, and the parameter names allow you to understand the law, or at least allow the people to use them to understand. If you have certain uh, values that mean stuff, you'd like to maybe name them appropriately. Uh, and here's just the definition of that, uh, uh, using the keywords, it's just my function. And instead of having the just comma, comma, comma with value, value you have name of the keyword equals, and then the default value. None is a special value in Python, meaning uh, not associated with any value. So it's, it's useful when cases where otherwise in some languages you have to pick a value like, uh, oh, I have to pick 99999 because nobody's ever gonna use that. Well, the problem is some people use that someday and then all of a sudden you have to pick another. Here case, none is useful to allow uh, people to uh, specify nothing yet. Now, what this says is if key one is equal to none, well, key one is going to be none if nobody, if, if the caller didn't use it. And this says, if it is none, then I'm going to do something. In this case, I'm going to set it to five. Uh, sometimes uh, you could do that if you put equals five up here, but sometimes uh, the things you do are more complicated than just assigning a value and uh, you want to use this test. Okay, let's see. So that's that's the keywords, and that's very very useful uh, in um, uh, Python. Some other languages have keywords too. Ah, here's another uh, built-in function that you might uh, find uh, a uh, an exercise. The exercise is uh, the print that we used so much so far. Uh, actually has, in addition to the 
uh, parameters. And notice how we, we often sometimes use print one variable or two variables or three variables. Well, actually, we haven't covered it in Python, but the way you, if you want to define a function that does, does do that, takes multiple uh, arbitrary number of positional parameters, you define it with a star args. We won't get into that right now, but the main thing is after that, in this case, print works as it has an, a couple of keyword parameters. Notice we said keywords parameters are useful uh, in case you don't use values or they're always, always the same. Well, this is the case in print. Print almost always ends with a new line. You always put a new line at the, after a print statement. And so this is how we say end equals uh, new line. The back, backslash end is just shorthand for that. And then notice when we did print, if you notice closely, when you print out multiple things, they were separated by a space. Well, this is how uh, print works. Uh, it take, Since we didn't use these, uh, print works just the way uh, you would expect it. It, it separates the uh, number of arguments uh, with a space, and at the end, puts a new line or starts a new line. Now, this allows you to, uh, you can use print uh, to do things like in, if you wanted to print out a bunch of uh, values, uh, say you were doing HT, uh, uh, you know, HTTP and you wanted to put uh, four, uh, what are called four addresses, the addresses are uh, numbers separated by colons. Well, you could say, okay, I'm gonna print those and put a sep and out comes uh, the values separated by a colon instead of a space. Or sometimes if you wanna print things on a single line, uh, with multiple print statements, you can say end equals quote, quote, and it'll just do that print and it won't print the, uh, it won't put it on the next line. Uh, the exercise here is to uh, just make a, a little file that, that uses print and uses each keyword and try it out, do a little uh, trying out. Okay. Uh, here's another exercise, which we'll leave uh, because actually uh, we do a follow on in the homework explicitly. This says, uh, uh, if you wanted to prompt a, a user for a number and then uh, you wanted to print out for the numbers that they gave, one to n, <coughs> the factors, i.e. one has a single factor, the two has a factor of one and two, three has one and three, four has one, two and four are factors and so on. Um, try that, and uh, you'll if you notice that uh, use print to uh, allow you to print these things on a single line. Uh, okay. Uh, ah, here's just some some exercises. To, uh, notice we we did those uh, examples. But gee, a lot of people say, oh, everybody knows one is a factor of everything. Don't print that. Uh, oh, and by the way, this, the number itself is, a, is a, uh, a factor, so don't print that. And so uh, an example is, okay, omit the number and the numbers, you know, improvements. Uh, if you do the first exercise, omit number. And I think this is explicitly a homework assignment for the sec, you know, omit the one and the number itself. And then a little clever is, okay. Now a little tougher, uh, only print the numbers that have multiple factors. I uh, is the only, don't print one because it only has one. Uh, don't print uh, two because it only had, you know, one and the number itself. Three, the same thing. Oh, but four has a, what is called a really uh, non-trivial non, uh, case. So why don't you just print, you know, uh, you know four and uh, so on. So anyway, and then the, the last improvement was, okay, uh, uh, maybe you'd like to, so you could play with larger numbers without having to go too far, um, ask of from and to, and uh, print the, um, you know, factors there. Okay, uh, let's see. I think we're, we're there. We're at eight o'clock and uh, um, 
uh, I think we'll stop here and we'll answer questions. But before I answer general questions, uh, how about uh, anybody have some questions directly on what we've covered? I uh, some uh, we might as well use that as a as a lead in to uh, uh, the question and answer. Does anybody have uh, a question on um, the things we've just covered in in particular? Anything that's that's bothering you or is unclear, or, uh, holding you back? Uh, uh, open, uh, you know, unmute your mics and uh, speak up. Do people want to take a five minute break before they follow on? Yes. I think I'm unmuted, uh, and I'm okay without the break. But I can okay. Does anybody have questions, particularly about the things we've just covered that are? Uh, unclear. Because if you have a question, uh, I bet other people do, too. Yes. Um, hi, I had a quick question. So sure. For uh, equality, you said to use two equals? Yes. How do you specify uh, inequality? Oh, uh, uh, exclamation point equal. Okay, thank you. It's a, uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it, it was a bit, the double equals was a sort of compromise because uh, otherwise it, people have done languages where you they try, the compiler tries to figure out whether it's an assignment or whether it's a test. But I think most people felt it was it was too much of a uh, a hassle and it wasn't going to buy you that much. Any other questions? That's good. Yes. Well, um, well, I have a quick question about sure. the um, the turtle, the picture of the turtle. So when you um, put like color times three, so because I kind of missed that part, so I didn't run the code successfully. So I'm not sure what happened. Okay, let's let's see if I can get it back here. Uh, if I look at this, uh, if I go. Uh, if I go here and I say recent files and I say my picture three and you're talking about this here? Uh, yeah, I adjust everything as you type here, but I don't think... Oh, uh, is it important to type the time three, the green time three over there? Say, say, say is it important? I, I think the only thing that mine is different than yours is the green time three at the top, the third line, say like a growing square spiral time three. Do I need have to type that? Uh, not particularly. Remember, this is all in a... Uh, a, yeah, a, a documentation yeah. string, if you will. It, it, the, remember, these, the, this says a multiple line string. Uh, and mm -hmm. if you have a multiple line string and you haven't assigned it to any place, uh, what that says to the compiler is, oh, this is just a long drawn out comment by the, the author. Uh, I'll just keep it around, uh, but I won't do anything. 
So all this stuff in here is, is not going to do anything in your program, for, except it's going to stay around so that uh, people who read your program uh, mm -hmm. see, oh, they, they, this person is, uh, you know, I mean, I probably should have said something like, uh, Okay, so actually my, uh, so when I run it, it shows name error, the name color is not defined. Okay, let's see. Um, let me see here. Um, I wonder if you can share your... Uh... Yeah, I can share you my screen if you okay. want. Um, let me see how to... Laura, can't you do that? Um, oh, yeah. Okay. If you probably don't have it turned on, but I can make you a co-host and we can turn on a screen sharing. All right, as a, as a host, can we uh, can we allow screen sharing or do in general or no? Um, not with the way this meeting is set up. You That's can fine. It, yeah, you can well, do we it think that. about it. Anyway, so yeah, if you could show it, we could uh, maybe uh, see that that'll help. I think uh, if I can see what she has. Yeah, Sometimes so, people have been known to chat to, if, on small things and send it over chat, but let's let's see if we can share the screen. So, <clears throat> Junwei, I did turn yeah. on, um, I made you a co-host if you want to go ahead and screen share. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Now, do I have to stop sharing or no? It's possible, yeah, I think actually maybe yes. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing here. Okay, I run this several times. Okay, yeah, okay, now I can share the screen. Uh oh, I don't know which one to share. Let me see. Do you have multiple screens? Yeah, I do. So if you if you look at the sharing, if you, if you go to share it, it, it should show up a, a list of uh, things and you want to show the one you want to click the one that has your program on it. Whiteboard. Uh. I know that's a difficult sometimes to to realize that, but the thing I've found in the uh, in my trials, the thing that helps me remember is I just say, okay, what do I want them to see? And and it's that screen that has the the stuff that I want them to see. Uh, I click on that and uh, it generally shares that. Okay, let me see if I say pause. Is it this one? Oh. Can you see anything? I, I, can't, I can't see anything. All I see is your name. So when you say sharing, you should it show should show up a, a couple of screens there, and one of them should have your program. Okay, never mind. It's too complicated for me. I don't. I I think I'm sharing, but actually I'm I didn't. So, um. Well, okay, uh, some, yeah. Can somebody like just like close the option of my me sharing the screen so that so the Ray can continue? I don't know. Like I try to share it, and then he. Jinwei, do you want to try turning on your, the, I don't think the camera should make a difference, but it might. Oh, I have a feeling, yeah, maybe. I don't even know where is, like now I'm kind of in a different place. I'm not sure where am I, like I try to turn my, oh, okay, here it is. So you want to click on where it says share screen, right? And then it should pop. Yeah, up. it should be down at the bottom of your picture. It should actually, you know, it says mute to stop schedule participants share screen. Never mind. I don't want to like waste time of like doing that. Well, it's not waiting screen. Nobody else has asked a question. Oh. So, and I have a feeling that if if this is uh, confusing you, it's probably confusing others. Allowed app below to record a contact. So there's a place where it's... it seems my computer blocked the Zoom and then it won't allow me until I like do administration thing to allow it like through the privacy. It seems complicated. 
It seems that I cannot do it right now. Let me see. Click the lock. Oh. Uh, Do you see the the uh, a screen with a share screen option at the bottom? We see you. I, I, I see a thing with your name on it, but I don't. I have a feeling you you haven't clicked the share screen. Oh, I have to leave meeting to do so. I don't. Oh, wait. What is this? Um, you should have an app. There should be a menu with options somewhere, either at the top or the bottom of this uh, of your screen. And it will say end or leave meeting somewhere along there. But before you get to that option, it'll say share screen. You want to click on that. Oh, OK. OK, I see. OK, now I can share the screen. OK. OK, allow, allow it. Okay, and then you want to pick the screen. If it has more than one, you want to pick the screen that has the program in it. Yeah. There you go. Can Brilliant. you see it now? Yep. Oh, okay, yeah. So this is the thing that I have. So, um, so this is the thing I type in. Oh, wait, not this one. Uh, this one? So this is the thing I type. And then when I run this. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I, don't, I don't I don't see your program. Oh, can you see? I, I see your uh, idle, uh, your your idle. Uh, um, it looks like you're you're. I have a feeling you're sharing the the idle uh, screen, not your program screen. Okay, so when I when I run this, so if I click on run, it will go like that. Yeah, color. Let's see. Color is not defined. Okay, but okay. So the, that that's showing your idle uh, screen. Uh, see if you can go uh, stop sharing and go back and say start sharing, and then pick the pick the other screen. Okay. That's where I'm, I'm thinking you're. Uh, and I'm guessing uh, color is it's because you you haven't. You don't have an import. Uh, oh, so you cannot see it. Okay, so for stop sharing, and then I'll share another thing, right? Share screen. Okay, this looks good. good. My picture. Ah, okay, good. Uh, from okay, wait, so it's different. Uh, oh, that looks. No, no, this is the old one. So let me stop sharing and then do it again. All right. All right. Now I know. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Sorry good. for the. Yeah. Okay. So this is the thing I type in. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Let me just uh, view options. Exit full screen, so I can just see this. And look at mine. Uh, okay, my picture. Da, 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 that looks good. From turtle colors that colors C three equals colors four I equal in range. That looks good. That looks good. Uh, okay, so that that looks. Uh, very good. Uh, and when you and when you run this, if you just say a uh, run, what's it do? And then it will show uh, the name error. Say okay. Why do try running it again? Say okay. run. Okay. Let me see. Uh, don't 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 get rid of it. Don't get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. So I put. Run. Oh, it, can you see anything? Um, I I can't see anything, but I have a feeling it's because 
uh, it's in a different your 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 output's in a different window. When you ran it again, what happened? It is still show like name error. If if name color is not defined. Uh, let's see. Oh, why don't you set line numbers? Set uh, go go to go to um, go to options and show line numbers. Uh. Now, go wait, wait a minute. I guess I guess what I'm I'm wondering here is uh, I don't see I don't see your uh, uh, I don't see your your uh, whole shot. I don't see your top line at, at file edit format run options window help. Oh uh, yeah, so here it is. Can you see it? Now, uh, I I don't. I mean, uh, are it's you on like, at the very top? It says like file edit format run option window help. Uh, maybe you have to pull it down a little bit because all I see is from turtle import star as the top. Let's see. Well, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, So, so you can't see my full screen. You can only see one window, right? Right, but one window should be like your, your. Um, oh, oh, let's see. That's weird. I I'm wondering if uh, let's see. I don't uh, when you when you share a screen. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't see your whole. Uh, well, I'm wondering if you're running the same program you think you are. Let me. See. I mean, when you saw my screen, you, you saw that it said uh, uh, when I when I share my screen. Uh, you see the whole window, including uh, uh, my file edit format and so on, right? Yeah, but like for me, like I have to choose, like for Apple, I have to choose I, if I want to show desktop or, or idle or like which file. So I have to click on each window to show you. To show, you know? okay, you can't show me the, your whole screen. No, try, I can't. Or try, I can choose desktop to Yeah, see. try desktop. That should show. Okay, should so the I same show desktop screen. That might be help. Can you see? Uh, let's see. I, I see. Okay, so I'll switch to the idle. Can you still see something? Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so um, so here's the bar, and then okay. everything. Yep. Okay, now we can see. Okay. Okay. Okay, now it, it, things pop down so they cover up part of the program, right? Okay, uh, so let's see. Okay, so why don't you go up to uh, as a, uh, go up to options and and put the and then go options and then show line numbers. Okay. Uh, okay, and let's see when you okay now if you. Uh, Right for stars, colors. Okay, why don't you try running it? Okay, yeah. So if I try to run this, so I'll, I'll. Okay, that. So let's see. So name error. Name color is not defined. I yeah, run it several I'll... times, so it has like all those lines. And I try to fix it. It has like a different name error. So when I try to fix it, it's like something like color not object defined. Object defined. Something like that. Bring it all. Is uh, it? I think it, it looks. It looks especially. Can you can you go up to the beginning of your uh, your uh, your idle output? Is that the yeah. first? Is it? Uh, 
It's like uh, kind of my notebook. <laughs> like you like take the note. Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, just hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold, hold. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this so, is the first time I run it. It says like name color is not defined. So I try several times. Sure. And I okay. try to fix this and I put a different like a color instead of color. Okay. And, uh, let me see. It's not. In, in the bottom one, the last one you did. Yeah, and the last it, one I did. You see, this is turtle py. Are are you sure your your code is in turtle py? Uh, wait, let me see. So you see the the, the thing that says restart, and it says uh, 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 in way uh, documents Python programming class practices slash turtle dot py. Yeah, yeah, that's where I saved it. I said because I, yeah. Because you have my picture dot py. So the question is, no, I'm, no, I'm, I think I'm I have turtle. I think I have turtle py. So this is the one. So this is the turtle py. This is the three times thing that I put, and this is the thing like I download from your. Um, right, right, right. Okay, so so. Uh, so this yeah, is, so I should fix that probably. Yeah. I uh, yeah, that, that turtle dot py. Uh, if you say save, what uh, uh, to the turtle py? I'm well. Turtle py is probably a dangerous number. Uh, hey, oh, oh, wait a second. Uh, pick a different name. Pick a different name. Say do do the my. Uh, yeah, save it as, do save as uh, my uh, picture underscore on the three dot py. Save as, okay. And, and, and put, the, put the my, you know, up there, we're in Perl, put my right up there, save as, I change turtle to my program, or my picture, my picture. Underscore three. Okay, say, save. Okay, now try that. Now try running. Okay, I'll save again. Let's do the same. Uh, my picture underscore, and so the first restart. So that's just the bottom one, right? The bottom one mm -hmm. here. Uh, my turtle picture. Uh, dot py most users something closely. So when you run it, you so you are able to successfully run it, right? Yes, yes. In fact, I I can show you that. Uh, but let's see, name color is not the fine color. Yeah, so. I think it's big, it's this line, like this line, um, like here. Uh, sorry, here color like this one, like color. Yes, yes. It, yeah, it does make sense to me because like color is not defined. Like I didn't define color. I define colors, but I didn't. Oh define yeah, color. that's it. You you got it. Right? It changed. It's it's. Oh yeah. no no no. Color but, is a color is a command. Yeah. Uh, so, in, so he, yeah. So he, it's a command. Like why it tells me that color is not defined. It's not a name. It's a command. From turtle import star colors colors three range. So let's think about it. Uh, looks. Okay, uh, try running it again. Run again, okay. I'll save it. And the, oh, wait, 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 what is it? When you did save, what happened? Let me see, they do save, uh, do save as my picture, class practices, uh, my picture underscore that, 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 that looks, looks. Okay, that's good. Okay, so save it. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, say, say replace. Okay. Now say run. Do you want me to close the shell and then run it again, like in other? Do you? No. Want where, where, where did where did the output go when you when you ran it again? What where where is? It will still go back to the previous shell that I run the previous. Um, uh, okay. Code. Try try try. Uh, yeah, just in case we're in the try try uh, closing it and and starting a. Oh, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter. Name, color. Da, 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 da. Uh, hmm. Let me see. I, I, I think still it's this. Another one says turtle ty. Oh, yeah. Like, do you know why it is? Uh, that's because, oh, hard? oh, I see what the problem, I think that's the problem. Now go up and get rid of turtle py. I think it's getting confused with the fact that, see the from turtle import? Uh, yeah. it's, 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 getting, uh, uh, it's getting confused with your name of turtle. Your file turtle is replacing the, the turtle module. So go up and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, change the name of turtle and your turtle py into, you know, uh, not turtle people. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Just, okay. I'll, I'll try to just like delete that. Probably. Just, yeah. Okay. Okay. Then how to. Yeah. Yeah. Just go up to file and, and uh, uh, what? find, yeah, turtle py and, and, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, get rid of it. Okay. Or rename if you want. I'll just get rid of. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a very good point. You you, you gotta. Okay. So let's try running. Okay. okay. So I just save it. You shouldn't have to it. save it. You shouldn't have to save it each time. Okay. It'll ask you if you want it. Okay. <gasps> All right. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Thank Very you. good. But a good point here, folks, uh, who's been able to stay. Um, if you name, if you name files that conflict with well-known files, uh, what will happen is if you say like this import from or import, it, it, it the Python will look according to the, it will look at you first in your directory. See, so what happened is it looked in your input, it, what, what happened when you made the word turtle in file, it changed what happened when you did, let, let me uh, open my, uh, why don't you unshare? Yeah, I unshare, but I'm not sure how to give the right back to you. <laughs> no, that's I, okay. Uh, I already, I, 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 remo I removed it young way, so don't worry oh, about it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Uh, see, when you when you had a file called turtle, it changed the way things happen when you did this because Python looks first in your local directory. Actually, it looks in a whole series of directories, and if you it this gives you power, but it also allows you to shoot yourself in the foot because what it says is ah. Oh, there's turtle there. I will use that and I will import all the stuff in there. Well, all that stuff in there didn't have color in it. If you looked at the where turtle is actually defined in its, its directory, you would say it would have color in there. So what happened is you inadvertently changed the, your, what your program did. So instead of in, in importing from uh, turtle the, the mass master module, it imported from turtle your your local dot py turtle. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. Be careful if you name your files that look like they might uh, you know conflict with with well-known things. Like probably don't use words like 
math.py or things, you know, use, use things that are uh, more likely to, like often, uh, you know, my, that's a lot of times why people use my underscore because they're not likely to uh, uh, confuse the system. Anyway, so it's great that uh, we discovered and actually uh, learned something because uh, you can see how uh, the it's it's quote not obvious, but it's 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 understandable now. But you can see how you spend a lot of time. You say, well, how could it happen? How could this happen? Well, it turns out that uh, by having you can confuse the system if you put uh, names of files that are likely to be. Uh, you know, conflict with names of uh, what do you call the, the, the standard uh, Python modules. Okay, uh, we we about hit the end. But does anybody, if anybody has another question, uh, does that answer the question? By the way, yes, you did. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, it took some time, but I think it's a a lesson we'll learn because uh, better to find it out when you're doing a program of, uh, you know, 20 lines and uh, when you, if you ever get around to doing lines of thousands of lines because finding the, uh, the problem will probably be harder then. Okay, uh, any other last, last chance questions? The homework is, is uh, there, you got all these X since we were uh, slow and going over things. So there are some others that uh, you can do and, uh, I welcome, uh, well, we have one person that sent in uh, uh, homework this time, but uh, I certainly uh, welcome uh, people, can't guarantee I'll do everything, but if you send it in the first one, I will certainly give you priority. Okay, uh, I guess we're, we're done. Thank Lauren, you, Ray. how's it going? <laughs> we're good, I think I'm so. Sorry to keep you. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate, uh, uh, is it possible uh, uh, to make it easier to people for to people to share screens? I I I, I know it, there's also 